can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. All right, welcome to our second episode from Chapter 7. And in this chapter, we're going to study cell structure and function. And in this episode, we're going to learn how do we look at cells to study them in modern times. In the previous episode, we learned about how Robert Hooke used a very rudimentary microscope and Antoine von Leeuwenhoek used an even simpler early microscope to look at cells for the first time around uh, just before the 1700s. So in this episode, what do we use to look at cells today? And it's going to start with this compound light microscope that we have here. Now, when we have the word compound, really what that word simply means is that you've got more than one lenses, right? And so two would definitely be more than one. And the first lens, and, and typically all you have is two. You toss in that third lens, and it, the physics of light makes that very, very difficult. So we typically just have two lenses. The first lens is actually closest to the object that you're looking for. So creatively, we call this the objective lens. And that would be right over here on this picture. So you would put the object right here on the stage, and these lenses are right next to it, so it's called the objective lens. The second lens is going to be nearest to your eye, and this one goes by two names. One is called the eyepiece, and one is called the ocular. And the word ocular basically just means eye anyway. So this is the lens that's going to be the closest to your eye. And your eye is actually going to be right here. Oh, some nice little... Um, eyelashes there, because everybody has green eyelashes, right? And so you're going to be looking right down in here. And so putting these, this lens with that lens is going to make the object get a lot bigger. Right? And that leads us to this. We've got to know a math formula in here. And it's the math formula for total magnification. Because we're using one lens and two lenses, putting those two together, we need to find out What's our total magnification? Because one lens is going to magnify this amount, the other lens is going to magnify another amount. Right? So typically your eyepiece magnifies at a, at a 10x, so sort of 10 times. So if you're using just the eyepiece, the object that you're looking at will look 10 times bigger than it really is with that lens only. Now down here on these objectives, they all kind of vary. Typically, you would have one that is 4x, you'd have another one that's 10x, and then you probably have one that would be 40x. So let's use the basic one here, which would be called low power. So on low power, you would have your eyepiece, which is 10x, and you're going to multiply that by the objective lens, which would be 4x, put those two together, and you would have 40x. So when we have this lens and that lens, total magnification is 40 times. Now over here on our highest power, typically what you would find on the microscopes in our class uh, is you would have 40x, which is the objective lens, times 10x, and that would give you 400x. So when you're using the highest power objective, you're going to be able to look at that in a very, very close and detail because it looks 400 times bigger than it really is. Right, I'm going to get rid of that because it's all up in my way. Now I want you to pay attention down here to what is called limit of resolution. And I usually just write this L of R, limit of resolution. The physics of light pretty much limit how much you can magnify something. Uh, and it's going to be a thousand times. Your physics teacher can give you the details on that. We don't really have time for that in this uh, screencast. But basically light can't bend enough to get to the point where we need to focus it more. So basically, to get to a thousand times, you would have an objective lens that would be 10x, and you're going to multiply it by an objective lens that would be 100x. Typically, we call that an oil immersion light because you have to put a drop of oil between that and the object so that the light can get through, and that would give you your 1,000x, okay? So this is in red. You want to make sure you know this. So make sure we know what this is, make sure we know what that is, and make sure we know what this is. Now, down here in purple, you need to make sure that you have this picture memorized because you will have a quiz and a test where you have to label every single part of that. Okay? So 
This stuff right in here, the observation tube, sometimes we call this the body tube. The neck connects this body tube where the light will go through to the rest of the microscope. The stage is where you put the object. The nose piece is where all the objective lenses are. The condenser lens basically takes the light, focuses it into a nice little beam. Uh, the iris diaphragm, basically if you think of like the shutter on a uh, camera, uh, either it's got a big hole or a small hole, depending on how much light you want to go through. Obviously the light source produces the light, base is the bottom. Uh, stage controls. We have very fancy microscopes where if you just manipulate these things, kind of like an exasketch, exos you can make the slide move all around. It's really easy to control. These are, are great inventions. Big fan of those. Now the focus knobs. Course adjustment will move the stage a lot. And you really only use that on the low power, which will be this red one right here. The fine focus only moves the stage a little. And you're going to use this one for the rest of the lenses because we don't want to move the stage up a bunch because then we'll break the slide. So we're going to use the course adjustment to get it in focus first. And then from there on out, we're going to use a smaller knob called the fine focus. Okay. Uh, if you're in my class, we're going to have a lab where we go over this in more detail. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're not in my class, your teacher will probably do the exact same thing. So we're not going to give you the fullest detail on how to, to focus and what par focal means and that kind of thing. We're going to let your teacher handle that one. All right, so let's move on to our next topic. All right, fluorescent labels. If you learned back in Chapter 2 when we talked about biomolecules, we learned that we can add radioactivity to them to make them glow. Uh, we can also add some other chemicals to make them show up with different colors because human beings are really good at seeing different colors. And so we come up with what's called fluorescent labels. Uh, you're either going to tag it with a, uh, an atom or an ion that's going to make it glow red or yellow or pink or blue, and then that's going to be able to be photographed very easy. So as you see over here in this picture, they've used two different, actually three different uh, fluorescent labels. A blue one to look at the nucleus, uh, a pink one, which is probably looking at endoplasmic reticulums, and then a green one, which is showing you the fibers of the cytoskeleton. And when you add these fluorescent labels, it really makes the structures just pop off the screen. Now, we can also use a fluorescent label for what are called chemical pathways, because maybe we want to find out where this protein goes once it enters the cell. So maybe as it goes from the cell into the cell, it goes to the nucleus. And then from the nucleus, maybe it moves back out the cytoplasm. And if you label it with a color, you'll be able to see that color move around. And that's really, really important for us to learn how the cell does its chemistry. All right, the next two slides are going to deal with the two types of electron microscopes. Now, electron microscopes give you a big advantage over the light microscope. Number one, their limit of resolution goes way beyond a thousand times. It's because we're not using light to see the image. We're using a beam of electrons. So think of like we're shocking it with electricity. And the, the physics of the electron allow you to magnify it hundreds of thousands of times larger than what it really is. So with a light microscope, remember, we're, we're limited to a thousand times. And when it gets to an electron microscope, it could be hundreds of thousands of times. So if we really want to get a detailed image, you want to use an electron microscope. The caveat with this is they're extremely expensive. The first of our two types of electron microscopes is the transmission electron microscope. And the key feature with this one is the electrons are going to go through the object. Now this is important because this allows you to see internal cell structures. So as you see in this picture, this guy right in here, that's the Golgi apparatus. And we can also see these things right here, these big bubbles. These guys are called vesicles. We can see from this picture that these vesicles who were made by the Golgi apparatus are moving this way to the out part of the cell. We cannot see this kind of detail using a light microscope. We have to use an electron microscope for this one. And remember, transmission electron microscope are great for internal cell structures, and it gives you a 2D image. 
All right, let's get rid of that. Move on to the next one. All right, a scanning microscope or scanning electron microscope or SEM for short. <laughs> These guys are really cool. Um, if you ever have seen in a science program where you look at the, the face of a bug or a fly and how crazy and, and scary and kind of Halloween-like that looks, that picture was made with a scanning electron microscope. And scanning electron microscopes give you this fantastic 3D image of the surface because what happens is the electrons are going to hit the object and then they're going to bounce off. And that gives you only the picture of a surface. So what we have over here in this picture is this big or structure right in here that's red, that would be a white blood cell, WBC for short. And then the yellow things, these guys are bacteria. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing a white blood cell that is grabbing these bacteria and pulling it in and it's going to eat it. So basically we have an immune cell that's eating a germ. And you can't really get this detail once again, under a light microscope, this is always going to, only going to happen if you use an electron microscope. So an SEM gives you a 3D image of the surface. And this one, remember, comes from an SEM. All right, we're going to end this episode. Uh, once again, you know, we're not really going over the total detail of all the mechanisms that we can use. But I do want you to focus on the light microscope. Uh, notice that you can use fluorescent labels to make some of the molecules and structures inside pop out. And I want you to pay attention to the two types of electron microscopes. Know the difference between a transmission electron microscope and a scanning electron microscope. All right. Till the next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.